Hello and welcome to another Pro Tipster Tennis Podcast. I'm joined again by Pro Tipster Johnny. He must be sick of the sound of me by now. This is our third podcast in two days. Hello, Johnny. Do you hate me yet? Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Paddy. Are you well? I'm very well. Looking forward to, to another show with plenty of tennis. Magic. Good stuff. Uh, look, we have uh, four events we're going to be looking at. So we have uh, three ATP events in Rotterdam, uh, Buenos Aires and New York. And, of course, there is a WTA event in Doha as well. Uh, where do you want to start, Johnny? You want to start with uh, Rotterdam? Yeah, let me just first say that uh, there are three men's events, like you said, and one women's event that we're going to talk about in this podcast. But there's uh, one thing that stands out for, for both, uh, for, for Rotterdam in, in the men's tournament and in the Doha for the women's, that we can have a new world number one in both men and women uh, as from uh, Monday if things go according to the plan of the players we will mention shortly. And I think we can start now with uh, Rotterdam. That's uh, that's that's the biggest uh, and most important uh, men's tournament uh, this week. It's a ATP 500 tournament, unlike Buenos Aires and New York, which are the two 250 uh, events. So just to say a little bit, it's played on hard courts, indoor in Rotterdam, with the total prize money of uh, one million eight hundred and sixty-two thousand. A nine ninety nine hundred and twenty five euros. So where do they it, get the twenty five from? <laughs> Why not just make it one point eight million? I mean, tennis players, they don't care about sixty thousand. That's that's pennies for them. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know, mate. It's, I'm not the right the right person to ask, but uh, obviously they've got you know they've got each uh, prize money for like for for each round when you reach uh, different rounds. Sort it uh, and categorize yeah. and then they sum it up. So it's not the total commitment, uh, financial commitment of the tournament. Of course, it's much higher than the one million, but oh, uh, that's this is what the, the price money, price money are. So the big name or the biggest name of this tournament is uh, Roger Federer, the one and only legend, uh, living legend of the sport, and the Australian Open winner from 2018. Uh, it seems he's not uh, getting old. Uh, what do you think, Paddy? Ah, uh, he's the, the the eternal fountain of youth. God, he's a handsome man, isn't he? I was watching some interviews with him there uh, this morning while I was uh, researching for a podcast, and he just seems he's like. I mean, if I was under, if if, if I was going into a tournament like that, I, I, you know, you kind of have to be egoistic about these things, and it's like, how would I react? To like being in a pre- press conference like that, and like I'd, I'd be stressed out the hell. I'd be like, okay, I could get number one here. I, I've just won in Australia. I have to, you know, I want to keep doing well. I'd be putting pressure on myself all the time. But he's sitting there going, oh yeah, I wouldn't mind hanging out with Rafa, Rafa Nadal there for a while because I'm kind of bored and I miss my family. It's like, what the hell? How can you be so relaxed? It's amazing. Fair play to him. He's joking, having a laugh. It's brilliant. <laughs> that was a great interview, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was. <laughs> Uh, when they asked him about uh, Rafael Nadal, of course Rafael Nadal is not not competing in uh, this tournament. Uh, therefore, the most important thing here, uh, Roger Federer has the chance to go uh, world number one as from Monday. And the only thing he has to do today, he plays his quarterfinal match against Robin Hasse. That's the home player, so it won't be. Uh, easy because of course Hasse will have the support of the home crowd, and this will be a, our main match to talk about. But to say say first in the beginning that if Roger Federer wins today, he will be the world number one again as from from uh, Monday. So that's the big that's the big question of this tournament, and uh, that's also a fact that attracts so many uh, so so much uh, so crowd so many crowds so many people. So many spectators uh, in Rotterdam. Johnny, I saw Johnny, some. I saw mean? some highlights, and uh, sorry, just to, to, to finish. And uh, the fans were going crazy whenever Roger Federer played. So it seems they are enjoying very much that uh, that he's there. He got a wild card uh, to 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 play it, to play in this tournament, and uh, the fans are absolutely enjoying him. I was going to ask you actually about uh, about about wild cards, but I'll keep it to later. And uh, but uh, Federer on what's he said he was thirty six 
God, that's the same age as me, and he's achieved so much, and I've achieved so little. <laughs> that's, Patty, that's just a, that's just a matter of opinion, you know, and uh, the way you look at it, I mean. Uh, okay, well, you know, Johnny, that's my, that's my parents' opinion, let's be honest here. Um, <laughs> no, but look, at, at 36, if, if he achieves this, if he becomes world number one again, will, does that mean he'll, surely then he'll be like the oldest, uh, number one? Yeah, that's, uh, that's 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 the record he can break. At the age of 36, he could become the oldest player, male or female, ever to be ranked uh, number one. Uh, the current re- record belongs to Andre Agassi, who was 33 when he was the world number one. And the women's record uh, is not far from actually from Roger Federer. That belongs to Serena Williams, who who was 35. And that's actually a lady who can maybe beat him if she continues for a few more years. Mm-hmm. We know that she had a last year. She had a she had a break because uh, she gave a birth to a child, uh, to to a baby. But now she she is back. She's going to be back. So if she continues for a few more years, she is the one maybe who can, uh, you know, push the push the the age limit a bit higher. But uh, this is this is going to be, and I and you can see from you can hear from my voice that I'm I'm saying it's going to be because I. I expect Roger Federer to to achieve this, to to win this uh, match tonight. That's going to be an ad- additional motivation for him today to cruise past uh, Robin Hasse of Netherlands to reclaim the world number one spot. Um, who do you see him going up against then, if if he beats Hass? Because I mean, well, who would be his biggest uh, obstacle? Of who would? Be? Well, uh, the, the the draw, how it is, uh, he will play uh, if he. Gets past Robin Hasse, he would play the winner of uh, Andreas Seppi against Danny Medvedev in the semi-finals. Uh, who it, that, that's the, the other match we will talk about. It's it's a difficult uh, to say who is going to come out as a winner if Seppi or Medvedev. I give more chances of Medvedev, the young uh, the young Russian guy, but Andreas Seppi is uh, the surprise. Uh, Package of, of of this Rotterdam tournament. They both Seppi and Medvedev had to come through through the qualifiers, so they both played plenty of uh, plenty of matches here in uh, in Rotterdam. But uh, Seppi uh, beat Alexander Zverev, the world number uh, and the, the, the number three seed here in Rotterdam, two uh, 0 on sets. So he's got some form. Anyway, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a closed one. But let's finish our uh, our prediction or our view on this uh, Roger Federer against Robin Robin Hasse match. So both players met twice before, so the head-to-head uh, record is uh, in favor of uh, Roger Federer winning uh, both matches. Uh, Roger Federer seems to be in incredible form and. Uh, he he beat uh, Bemelmans uh, in round one in 47 minutes, 6-1, uh, 6-2. That was incredible performance. You know, in six in 47 minutes, that's something you don't you don't see very often in uh, in men's tennis, uh, even if it's played the best of three sets. And then he had a bit of a problem with Philip Kohlschreiber of Germany uh, yesterday. Uh, when it was a it was a quite difficult match for for Roger Federer, but he managed to get through seven six six five. So that was a, a good, I think a good test before today uh, when when he when he meets uh, Robin Robin Hassan. So the odds are one point zero five for Roger Federer to win and eight point seven nine for Robin Hassan to win. Obviously. There is very little value for betting on Roger Federer to win this game, even though I think we all believe that he's going to do it, especially with with the motivation that uh, that, that he has a part of winning the tournament, but also with the, to reclaim the world number one spot. So I was looking at the total number of games on market uh, on over under in this perspective. And that's something that uh, I would see as very possible to to and some value. So I I, I choose for this one 
under 20.5 games. The odds for this one are 1.92. So I expect Roger Federer to, to win this in two sets. Uh, for this, this bet to, to, to be won, we need him to win, uh, we need, uh, Robin Hasse to win, uh, maximum of eight games. So whether it's gonna be, and for, yeah, maximum of eight games and Roger Federer not, not to win, uh, a set in, uh, in, uh, no, oh, sorry, I'm actually wrong. Now I, I got mixed, mixed, mixed up myself. I was going to say that he cannot win uh, a set with seven games, but he can. So even if it's, let's say, uh, even if it's, uh, let's say, six, seven, six, and, uh, in, it's a tiebreak in the first set, and then he wins, uh, easily the second set, it's fine. So that, that's, that's the advantage of this bet that even in, if things go, let's say, gets more complicated in the first set, we still have chance of, but I think Roger Ferdinand will win this something like six, four, six, four, or six, even six, six, three, six, four, six, three, six, two, something like this. I mean, I expect some resistance from Robin Hasse in the beginning, in the beginning of the match. He will have the support of the crowd. It's a night session in Rotterdam. The match starts, uh, 7.30 Central Europe time. So we'll be under the spotlight. Lots of TVs actually streaming this live. If you are, if you are interested, this happening is also good. It's not the last match of the, of the schedule. In Rotterdam, because the Sepi Medvedev match comes after this one, uh, as the second match of the evening session. But it will be the highlight of the, definitely of the, of the, of today's, uh, of today's program in, uh, in Rotterdam. So expect Roger Federer to win in two sets. I have to say Roger Federer, uh, won this tournament, the Rotterdam tournament before. So he is familiar with the conditions and how things are. Uh, Roger, Roger Federer in uh, 2018 is nine, uh, nine zero. So he, he's won nine matches so far and he lost none this year. So that's an incredible role. stat. He's on a good role. Um, yeah. on the other hand, Robin has a, is Pretty good in, in 2018. He won seven, lost six. He was quarterfinalist in Pune, that's in India. That's before, and semifinalists in Oakland, in New Zealand. That's, but all before, uh, Australian, Australian Open. Uh, Robin has just to complete the picture. He beat his countryman, TMO DeBacher and Talon Griegspoor in easy straight sets, uh, before reaching the quarterfinals and, uh, challenging, uh, Roger Federer. Uh, just to say, it would be actually nice to see Roger Federer take, taking the world number one spot, not because we don't like Rafael Nadal, we do, do definitely like him as well. He's, they are both, uh, both legends of this sport and, uh, they are great athletes and, you know, just, even when you see Rafael Nadal during the press conference, it's similar to what, to what you said about Roger Federer. He's so calm and he's a truly, uh, uh, he represents the sport really well, both of them. But I think the, the greatest thing would be about Federer taking the world number one would be that it would be a new inspiration for others that, you know, uh, he, As, for, when go, you get 36, you're, you're not past it. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. exactly. That's, that's, that's what I'm, that, <laughs> that's what, that's what I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it was a long time, uh, that he was, uh, he was, uh, the, the world number one, uh, he was last, uh, held the top ranking on November 4th in 2012. That's six years. A lot of people thought that, uh, he's perhaps, uh, you know, gone with his best form and he, he cannot reclaim the, the, the world number one spot again and he won't win the Grand Slam titles again. But, uh, he, last year he proved them wrong and this year he, he, he proves them wrong again. So, I think that's that's something quite unbelievable, and it's a nice story of of, of the sport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, not going to show it to my parents because they'll be disappointed again in all my failings. <laughs> 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 um, you were saying about uh, Seppi and yeah. uh, Medvedev as well. 
so yeah, the winner of uh, Federer and uh, against Hassel will play the winner of Sepi and Medvedev. That's the other other match of the night session. The head to head is zero uh, zero, so they didn't play each other yet. The odds for Sepi win one point nine four. The odds for Medvedev win one point eight one. Uh, we talked about it. Sepi came in nice win over Alexander Zverev. Uh, both playing the qualies. I have to say, Sepi is a lucky loser. Uh, and now qu- a quiz question for Paddy. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what's a lucky loser in tennis? I have no idea. I've never heard this before. Really? No, honestly. Yeah. Okay, so let let me explain. So if we look at the draw of uh, the Rotterdam tournament, and we have to go to the to the qualification, uh, Sepi actually, he lost his uh, qualification final match to Martin Klesen of Slovakia, the former winner of the tournament in 2016. So that means he was supposed to be out. But then, because of the injury of one of the players that were seated directly in, in, in the main draw, he got a, he got a buy into the main, into the main draw as a lucky loser, let's say. So he lost in the quali- qualifiers. But then he was given a chance to compete in the main draw because of the injury of one of the players. So, you know, it's kind of, uh, he got a chance and he grabbed it. He won the first, uh, first round against the Souza 2-1, uh, in sets. And then, yeah, then the big, big, big game against Vera. Uh, Medvedev played uh, Jules Muller in the first round, won 2-0. And then played uh, Herbert, and that was a more difficult game for him, but he managed uh, managed to make it with a with a three six seven six and six four win. Quite a challenge for him, but I think at his age, you can see his ups and downs. He is not as consistent uh, as other players, but uh, in his age, it's uh, it's it's quite normal. I mean. He's 22, so okay, he's not he's not 18, he's not a teenager anymore, but still he has some you know time to develop and uh, and get better and better. Yeah, course, yeah. So it's gonna be an, it's gonna be an interesting interesting match. Uh, it's gonna be experience on one side. Andreas Seppi, he's known as a good play character, but uh, he with his experience, he's confident on all all other surfaces as well. And it will be against a young guy who who is the I don't know if I can say still a rising star because I mean at 22 you should uh, already prove your qualities if you want to be in the top amongst the top players. But uh, yeah, I still rate, rate him as a young prospect definitely. You mentioned something earlier about uh, Federer being a wild card. Now I'm used to uh, wild cards in uh, American sports, and it usually means best runner-up. That's what we'd say in 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 Europe. Yeah, yeah. It's... But in tennis, it's different, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, we are used to it from let's say NFL, where yeah. uh, the wild card means that when they when the teams when have, when they have a wild card weekend for the playoffs. Uh, the meaning in tennis is uh, is a bit different, you know. Uh, when you got a wild card. You're, let's say you're invited to play uh, in the tournament uh, either because you would not get there because of the ranking or you didn't uh, sign up for the tournament at the, uh, at the, at the given time or uh, for other reasons. So uh, let's say you're not, I don't want to say eligible to play in the tournament because obviously Roger Federer is world number two, he is, but... Uh, but you know you are kind of uh, invited from the local organizing committee to 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 participate in the tournament, despite that you would not uh, otherwise you you wouldn't be able to take part. It's mad because Roger Federer, someone who's so who's so big, gets a wild card, doesn't it? Like like I would always think a wild card <laughs> would be maybe like a an older local player who is not on the scene as much anymore, or else it's a new young a whippersnapper who is uh, raising yeah, the is. ranks, you know. It is usually like this. Yeah. You usually give give wild cards to, uh, let's say, young players who, uh, especially from your home country, uh, you give them a chance to compete against the best, despite that they don't have the ranking to 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 feature at the tournament. And uh, so you give them the chance to feel the uh, the atmosphere of, of a big tournament. You give them the chance to 
to experience the big tournament to 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 compete against the best uh, which which de- which definitely helps them in their careers because if you don't play big matches and even if you you know, if they know they maybe the guy is going to lose heavily but it's a good experience for him uh, especially if they're young because you need to feel this uh you know you need to feel this big tennis even if you're young you're changing from the juniors to to the uh, to the seniors you need to experience as it to to have the feeling and that that might help you to develop your career. Yeah, there's um, the other two uh, quarterfinals then. The Burdick uh, and Goffin looks fairly tightly matched as well. The bookies, it's fairly even, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I'm, and I'm, it's a very difficult one to call. Uh, at the time that our listeners will listen to this podcast, the match might be already over, so that's why I, I didn't pick this one. But uh, it's let's see how, let's see how this one goes. So it's Birdie Coffin uh, opening the day session in Rotterdam, followed by uh, Rublev against Dimitro. Another interesting one, where it's very, very hard to separate these two, at least for me. So even though the bookies the bookies have uh, Dimitro as a favorite, I would not r- rule out uh, Rublev uh, actually at least making it very difficult for him. Okay. Uh, right then, sure, we'll leave Rotterdam and we'll head over to Argentina. Um, what what yeah. should we be looking out for here? So we've got a smaller tournament in Argentina, the Argentina Open in Buenos Aires. It's a 250 tournament. So just to, just to say, we've got different categories of the tournaments in the ATP. So it's a uh, we've got obviously Grand Slam is the, just uh, something that's that's the top of you know that's the biggest tournament you can get. Then there are the Masters tournaments, uh, 1000. And then it's the 500 category. And then it's the 250 category. And then we've got challengers. There are, there are a few levels of challengers as well. But this, uh, so, so, so yeah, we, we will talk about now the 250 tournament, the Argentina Open in Buenos Aires. Uh, last year it was won by the Ukrainian player, Alexander Dolgopolo, the 2017 winner. Uh, from from the past, uh, from the noticeable players, David Ferrer won this tournament three times uh, in 2012, 13, and 14. And uh, and, and in, and in it's, sorry, and an interesting fact is that the last Argentinian to win the title in Buenos Aires was uh, David Nalbandian in 2008. So that's already 10 years since uh, Argentinian won this. Tournament. The reason why I'm talking about the last Argent- Argentinian to win Buenos Aires tournament is we're going to talk about match of Dominic Thiem, the number one seed, against Guido Pella, who is Argentinian. So Guido Pella is um, uh, is number 59 in the world. Dominic Thiem is number six. So just from these few words, you can guess who is the favorite. Uh, who is the favorite of the bookies and who is the favorite to win this match? Uh, Dominic Thiem is an Austrian tennis player. He won this tournament, the Argentina Open, in 2006. So he's familiar with the conditions, with the facilities, and uh, with the tournament itself. This season, his uh, his record is six one. So he won six matches, lost just one, and that was uh, the surprising defeat to Sundgren in the Australian. Open. He which before the Australian Open, he withdrew from tournament in Doha, so there were some concerns about his uh, uh, fitness. But uh, the Australian Open proved that he's he's fine. Clay. Let, we have to say that the Buenos Aires tournament, the Argentina Open, is played on clay. So we've gone from indoor hard courts tournament in Rotterdam to clay clay tournament in Argentina. Dominic TM loves clay. It's his favorite surface. Uh, th- that's why his focus will be probably in April, May, when the big clay tournaments are uh, are around, and uh, obviously the Roland Garros. Uh, that that is always traditionally his. Uh, that's the big Grand Slam where he does pretty well because he loves he loves clay. He got a bye in the round one, but then he played another Ar- Argentinian, Horacio Zabalos, in the round two. He Beat him pretty comfortably, six four and six three. Uh, Guido Pella, 
just to talk about a bit this guy because it might be a bit unknown for some people. He's left-handed, Argentinian, the same as uh, Zeballos. Uh, and the head-to-head is, quite surprisingly, 2-1 for uh, Guido Pea. So he won the, the head-to-head match on, on clay in 2016 in Rio de Janeiro. But uh, CM won the most recent uh, head-to-head match this year at the Australian Open. I have to say that the surface was different. So still... TM from 2016 and TM at the moment uh, are like two different players. He's much more major, uh, he's much, he's more developed, he's much better player, much more confident, and uh, he's not, he, at the moment, I think the only player that can easily, well, easily, cannot say easily, but that can make uh, troubles to TM on clay, serious trouble would be Rafael Nadal. So that's, I think, says everything, that how strong TM is is uh, on clay. What's your pick? Um, yeah, the odds are not great for uh, TM win. It's only 1.23 uh, uh, in comparison with 3.86 for Guidopea. But my pick for this one is set handicap for Dominic TM, so minus 1.58 in handicap, set handicap. At 1.79 odds, so we need Dominic Thiem to win this in in two sets. Mm. Just to say a few more things, uh, the match is actually played. If you are depending what time zone you're listening to our in what in what time zone you're at, at, when, at the time of listening to our podcast, because if we are talking about the Central Europe time, the match is played. It's, this is scheduled for 15 minutes after midnight. So it's already, let's say, Saturday. But if you are in the UK, it's still on Friday. It's still, <laughs> still on Friday. So this is the, <laughs> still, this is the, the nice, <laughs> nice play around with the, with the time zone. <laughs> for this bet to win, uh, for the, this bet to win, I expect, uh, TM to play really confident. Uh, he will need to bit improve from his, uh, from his, uh, Previous, previous matches of this tournament, uh, because he was struggling to convert to break point chances he had against Zebaios. But, uh, the, the stat that I picked out is six of TM's eight ATP World Tour titles come on clay. So that shows how, how much he loves this, uh, this surface. And his record on clay is 84 wins. In comparison to 30 defeats, so that's a winning percentage of 74 percent. That's, I think that's quite incredible. It is. It's, it's very funny how how it, 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 I, I, it's. I think it's still it's still mad that uh, you know some people are just so uh, it's so different for them on on different surfaces. You know, like well, you, you would expect that as as their professional career uh, advances and goes on, and they play on different uh, surfaces, they become better. On, on other ones, but some of them, they don't. They just continue to be uh, better on one surface than others. No. Uh, I think it, the big influence is uh, what type of surface you have when you are developing as yeah, a player. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. W- what type of surface you're training on when you're a kid or when you're a teenager. And that that has, uh, you know, it, it, it depends a lot where you live. Uh but it's not just by country because it just might be that you live in a region where you have lots of clay courts and you don't have a indoor indoor yeah. uh, courts or hard courts. So then, <clears throat> obviously, you're 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 much better on clay. But of course, for TM to be in the top ten of the rankings, uh, he's much much improved on all surfaces because you can't be in the top ten if you're only good on clay. So th- we are not trying to say that he's only good on clay and his shit on all, all the rest of the surfaces. Yeah. What I'm trying, what I'm trying to pick out that he clay is his most favorite. That's why, for example, he's playing here in Buenos Aires and then not somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Not in, not in, not in New York or, or hard courts or not in Rotterdam because he loves clay. So he, he chooses this, <coughs> this tournament. All right. So let's move on then to uh, New York, another 250 uh, ATP event. Yeah. So I haven't picked any, uh, any match from this one. Just to say that there is a ATP tournament in New York. It's a tournament 
that was uh, originally located, uh, that was the original Memphis Open, and that was reallocated from this year to Long Island, and, and it's ensuring the continuation of one of the ATP World Tour's longest running tournaments in America. There are some, inter- there are also quarterfinals on the program today, and well, today and tomorrow, actually, uh, of our time. There is, uh, from, there's an interesting match between uh, Kai Nishikori, uh, against Albert of, uh, of, uh, I think Molda, Moldavia. Uh, that might be an interesting one. Uh, Kevin Anderson plays, uh, Tiafue from USA, uh, and, uh, Karlovic plays Qu- Sam Query, the home player, in a game where we expect a lot of aces, <laughs> not, not much breaks, and probably some tie breaks. So if you're looking for some over bets, then this, this might be an option. Both are great in serving. Uh, not so good in returning. Sam Query is world number 12, but he's not so convincing in the last couple of weeks or months, let's say. So, would be looking for over bet. However, you have to say that the over line is set quite, quite high because the bookies expect the same. So, uh, uh, they expect three tight sets. If that comes in, then the bet would be one because the line, as I see it now, it's, uh, Said somewhere around 26, 25.5, 26.5. So that's, that's quite a high line. But if you get three sets or two, if you take the 25.5 line, you need two tie breaks, two sets with with two tie breaks at least or three sets. So that speaks for itself. But I haven't picked a, specific match for this tournament just want to mention that there is a tournament like this uh, and i think we can move on to finally to some vta tennis yeah. to satisfy our uh, vta tennis lovers let's go to doha yeah so the biggest tournament for women this week is in doha it's vta premier five category of the tournament now there are different categories of vta tennis They've got the four premier mandatory events in India and Wales, uh, K, Biscay, Madrid, and Beijing, with prize money of 4.5 uh, million American dollars. So that's the highest category. And then there's this five premier five events in Doha, Rome, Cincinnati, Toronto, and Toronto, Montreal, and Wuhan, with a prize money of two, uh, two, two million dollars. So this is where Doha belongs to this category. Uh, the match I've looked at from as our listeners might have heard from previous pod, tennis podcasts, I'm not a, a big fan of betting on BTA tennis because of the unpredictability uh, uh, of uh, the BTA tennis. It's quite hard, you know, to to pick a, to make a good Good tennis bet on VTA tennis because I don't know if it's uh, the mentality or how they approach the game, but uh, you can get very strange results in uh, VTA tennis. You can get a lot of comebacks, a lot of turnarounds. But I picked one match that I I think that has perspective to to come through, and that's the match of Simona Halep of Romania, the world number two. Who will be playing, uh, uh, Catherine Bellis, the qualifier who made her, made it all the way to the, to the quarterfinals. Now, the big, the big story in Doha is, seem very similar to Rotterdam. Simona Halep can reclaim the world number one spot. We all know that she was very close to winning the Australian Open title, but only fell short to Caroline Wozniacki in the final in three sets. Um, now Halep can reclaim back to the world number one spot. She needs to make one round more than Caroline Wozniacki. At the current state, <coughs> Wozniacki is also in the quarterfinals of the tournament in Doha, the same as Halep. Uh, the draw, how it is, because, 
Carolina's uh, number one seed, Halep number two seed. So if both make their way, they, they, they should meet in the final. However, the good thing for Halep is that she's got a, probably a better draw because Caroline was actually plays today at 4.30 Central Europe time. The inform Angelique Kerber, which will be a, definitely a much harder task for her than uh, Simona Halep, who plays uh, the, the mentioned qualifier, Catherine Bellis. So, ha- Simona Halep won this tournament before. She won it in 2000. And, um, and for at that time, when she won, win this, won this tournament, it was her probably her biggest uh, title of the career. She, she beat Agnieszka Radwanska and Angelique Kerber on the way to the title. The big story uh, is if if uh, Simona Halep is fully fit after the ankle injury that she picked up in Melbourne in the Australian Open, but uh, as we saw, she, she played the Australian Open all the way until the final. Then she had to pull out of the Romanian Fed Cup World Group 2 tie against Canada, but seeing her in Doha and seeing the highlights and seeing the matches she played, <coughs> sorry, she seems to be fully fit and very confident and motivated to, to go as far as to win the tournament and reclaim the world number one uh, spot. Uh, interesting st- uh, story is that she changed her sponsor. She was playing without sponsor at the Australian Open after she failed to renew her contract with her longtime sponsor Adidas. Now she's playing with uh, competitor Nike. She lost just, uh, she dropped just three games against Ekaterina Makarova uh, in round two because she was given a buy in round one. She won six, three, six, uh, six games to love. And then looked even better against Anastasia Sevastova. So she's, it seems, uh, she, she's fully fit. Uh, she will play number 48 and the 18 year old Captain Bellis. Uh, that's, that's a player that might be a bit unknown to our, to, to the fans, or to the tennis fans who don't maybe follow tennis so regularly. Amongst her memorable wins definitely belongs the, the defeat of uh, a dead time number 13 in the world, Dominika Tsibulkova, in the first round of the US Open in 2014. At that time, Bellis was a 15 year old wild card, ranked world number 1208. So that's, that's a big, that was a big achievement. Here in Doha, she beat uh, Daria Kasatkina, who had to retire due to neck injury. Then she, <coughs> then she eliminated US Open runner-up Madison Keys. And then in the round three, she, she beat the former champion of Doha from last year, Karolina Pliskova from Czech Republic. So that was an incredible win. Seven six six three, and she was the, her weapons that she showed during that match, which she has to build on in the match against Halep, was the defense and some impressive returning. The problem with she might have with Halep is Halep does not make so so many unforced errors like Piskova. She's a uh, much more accurate, <coughs> and she will have she will have much more consistency on her side. Uh, so speaking about odds and about the picks on this on this matchup, I was I'm picking Halep minus 4.5 Asian handicap. That's game handicap. So we need Halep to win five five games at least against Catherine Bellis. And the odds on pro tips are 1.75. Cool, good stuff. Um, that's it then, pretty much. There's nothing else uh, you want to mention from it, is there? No, I don't think so. Um, I think I think we can wrap it up after after this one. All right then. So look, Pro Tips of Johnny, thank you very much for joining me uh, for yes another podcast. Uh, we'll be back next week with another uh, tennis podcast as well. These are going very well. We we like the the reaction that we're getting, especially uh, listeners over on uh, on uh, iTunes and on YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, you can listen to us as I said, iTunes, YouTube, and we'll be on the Pro Tipster website, and we're on all the Android pod catcher thingies as well make sure and check out protipster.com where you can earn uh, real money by sharing your winning sports tips and you know if you're not all that good at predicting uh, sports 
events, then you should come over anyway because there's loads of great tipsters over there who are very good at it. Um, right, so from me and Johnny then, good luck, enjoy the tennis or whatever sport you're watching this weekend, and we'll be back soon with more podcasts. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipsterGlobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or ProTipsterIRL. Bye.